some praise. Every praise is to our God. We thank God for his delivering power. We thank God for his salvation power. We thank God for what he is doing right now in this hour. We thank God for it. We praise the name of Jesus right now. We have no other name to praise. We praise God for Jesus. We praise God for the Holy Spirit. And we praise God for who he is, not only what he's done, but for what, who he is. We praise the name of Jesus. There is no other name. No other name I know. Look, we are in, we've gone through a lot of things. God has brought us through a lot of stuff. Some people are not here today because they didn't get through. But God saw it fit for us to be here today. So we ought to give him every praise. We ought to give him all the glory. We ought to give him all the honor because he is due all the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We just thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. This is a tremendous opportunity. We just thank God for being here. I've known this man of God for a long time, yes. Pastor Ferrier. Boy, he, before he got in ministry, but I know him for a long time, even in the in what we call the secular world, because it's really, you know, the business world. And he and 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 you know, he was he was he walked different. He was different. We I met him way back in the '90s when the when things were different than they are today. And so, but the Word of God is constant. You can, it, it's a rock. It, it doesn't change. You know, these things have changed. Technology has changed. We drive different cars. We drive different things. But the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we don't have to worry about him he, because he's going to be there. Boy, he's going to be there on time, regardless of what we go through, regardless of what we are in. We thank God for what he is doing. And we and I've watched this man of God over time stand in the mid, middle of the storms, in the middle of trials and tribulation. It, it mm, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Happy Mother's Day for the mothers. We thank God for mothers. I, I was meditating and think about that a couple of days back in my mother's gone home to be with the Lord, and I had a great mother. But mothers, there's something different and special about a great mother. It's just, it's just something different. Fathers are great, but mothers have a compassionate and a different kind of heart. I remember my, my mother saved us from a lot of things because she was our advocate, because our dad was could get us. And, 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 and it, was, it was six of us, so, you know, it was a lot of us. And, and, and he had a look that could melt ice. But my mother, you know, but your mother was your advocate. She would come in and whatever. Now she was tough too, don't get me wrong. Now she wasn't no pushover. But she had a different side. She could she could be tough, but she could be tender all at the same time. And a mother, you know, and a mother's love through a father's heart. That's you know, that's 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 what we saw in, in the family. And so many times we we need that we need that mother's love. The God uses a mother's in a special way. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. The the mother uh, that some of us had and some of us didn't have. But God has a word for us today. And God is He's moving in a, in this earth. Um in a, in a special way. So we, we thank God for the man of God. We thank God for this house. We thank God for you. 
coming out today on a special day. And we thank God for being here because you could have been anywhere else. But God chose before the foundations of the earth that you were going to be here. And so he, he's brought a special word for you today because you're here. And he's tailor-made this word for the people that's gonna, that was supposed to be here. Some people were supposed to be here, but they, they chose not to. But God has placed his hand on you to be here and protect you. And we, we've gone through the Lord. The Lord is good. I mean, I, you know, I, I can think about the things that I've had to go through, not only in my life, but in the last couple of months. Boy, it's, it's been a, a different thing where God is doing. And, you know, just to, to let you know that, you know, I'm standing on the grace that I'm going to talk about. I'm standing in that grace today because God is a great God. I'm not talking about somebody, you know, that's not, but he's a great God. He, he can do anything that needs to be done. You don't have to. You don't have to water it down. You don't have to water down your problems. You don't have to say, oh, it ain't that bad and whatever. No, 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 no. God is big enough to handle whatever you're facing today. Whatever, whatever it is. Your health, your finances, loved ones that don't know Jesus, loved ones that don't want to come into the fold of God or into the family of God. God knows how to get hold of them. And I've seen God do some miraculous things. Two months ago, yesterday, my wife was in a horrible accident, a horrible car accident. And, you know, it, it shook me to my very core. There's no question about it. And we're still in the trial. It don't, it, you know, we're still in the midst of the trial. She's still in the hospital after 60 days. She's still in the hospital. But God... But God kept her. It could have been a different way. But God kept her. And he kept us. Because let me tell you, the trials and the tests that you go through. And I think about having a great parents and going through trials and tribulations. And that thing came back to me. Because, you know, when you make your vows to the Lord and to your mate, it's for what, better or for worse? See, it's not always, i never forget what my mom and my dad told me on my wedding day. He says, things are not going to be like they are today, baby, all the time. You've got to be able to stand the test of some trials and some things that you don't see coming. You've got to be able to stand. But the word of God and the rock of God can keep you. And the grace of God which is power, the, the grace of God could sustain you. So we are standing here. We're, we're, you know, we can't wait till the battle is over. We're going to shout now because we know in the end we win. See, you can't wait until all the, you can't wait until the sun's always coming out. You've got to, you've got to praise God and worship God when the storms are in your life. You've got to learn how to praise God through the sufferings and the pain of life. See, we, we, we just, you know, we can't be a Sunday, you know, just a Sunday morning Christian. We got to be seven days, 24 hours a day because the Lord is moving. And even in this COVID thing, God wanted to get our attention. He stopped everything. I mean, if God stopped everything, I mean, you would think that that would be a, a wake, wake up call. God is not looking for us to stay where we were. He's not looking for us to be what we were. He's looking for a different kind of devotion, a different kind of flow, a different kind of commitment to him. So we, we've got to be cognizant of that. We've got to be aware of what God is doing in this day because he's not working exactly like he did in the days gone by. There is a different wind, a different move of God going on in the earth. And because this thing is about winding up and winding down. And so we've got to be as Christians and as great mothers that are here today. And mothers, because the mother's prayer and the mother's heart and the mother's 
ministering to people is important in this day and age. The world tries to um, devalue motherhood, if you've noticed. If you notice, the world tries to devalue mother, but God honors motherhood. God honors motherhood. So we're going to get into the word today. Turn with me to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And if your protocol to stand while the word is being read, it's, that is tremendous. Ephesians 6. Chapter 6. Ephesians is a great book. Love Ephesians. And we're going to read just the first three verses, and I'm reading from the uh, CSB version of, of the Bible, and it, and it reads, children, obey your parents in the Lord. And King James Version says, for or because this is right, honor, and that's the key word tonight, honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise. Why? So that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. Let that word sink in. A long life in the, in the land. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you will speak now to us. Let our ears be attentive. Let our minds be alert. Let our hearts be ready to receive what you've got to say. So, Lord, we thank you, God. We know we have not been what we should be. But God, you are always faithful to us, regardless of what we have been. So Lord, we thank you, God, right now, that the anointing of God is loosed in this place. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you will do a work in us and in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen, amen. You can have a seat. The Lord is, again, doing great works. And Ephesians is an interesting book because it starts off with the first three chapters starts off with all doctrine, content of doctrine. But then the last three chapters get into practical everyday living. And everyday living is where we want to be today with with the, just going to talk to you a little bit today about this verse that God brought to my members this week, and it's a season of authority, but lasting honor. It's a season of authority and lasting honor. Obeying your parents is seasonal. Mothers, I know that's hard, that's a hard word, but the children, when they're in your household, they are required to obey you. But when they establish a new household and they establish and they be get married, your ob the obedience to you is gone. Now, I know you want them to obey all the days of their lives, but the Lord just doesn't back us up in that. You know, my son got married a few years ago and we had to, real, you know, I can't just call him up and say, because he's got a wife. And, he, and, and so you have to understand and flow with God's order of authority because he has an order of authority even for us old people. He has an order of authority. So obedience is seasonal, but honor, that's the word today, honor is lasting. So when they establish, when we establish a new household, we still are required to honor our mothers. We don't give up. See, that's lasting. That is not short term. That's a lasting honor. And honor doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to obey, but there's a certain way you talk to mom. There's a certain way you relate to moms. There's a certain way you celebrate moms. There's a certain way you just esteem moms. There's a certain way you bless your mother. 
Because a promise is connected to this, babies. A promise. You, you know, people say, well, things that happened to me. Well, you need to go back and check. How are you relating to your mother? What are you saying to your mother? Not only what are you saying, but how are you saying it to your mother? The Holy Spirit would put a check on you. You know, my wife used to come home and, you know, we had these phones and, you know, these, these, these little phones and the phone be on the other side of the room. She says, why is the phone on the other side of the room? She says, she, and my, my wife walks in a heavy uh, of discernment. So she says, you've been talking to your mother. I said, well, yeah, yeah. She says, and you didn't like what she said. I said, how you know? She said, because the phone is on the other side of the room. You've thrown the phone on the other side of the room. You didn't even hang it up. She said, so apparently, I hope you didn't say what you was, I said, no, I didn't say it, but uh, it, it was hard. And honoring people is not always easy. People think it's easy, but it's not always an easy thing to honor the people that you need to honor. It takes submission. See, you have to submit to honor. You have to get off your high horse, and you have to submit to some things to honor someone. And when you honor a God-given title, a God-given title, then you honor God. See, it's not just honor. See, in fact, it teaches you how to honor authority when you start honoring your parents. That's really why it's, it's a very important principle. And it's a principle, unfortunately, that gets violated too many times this day. Because you have to honor there. Now, that doesn't mean you always like what's going on. We're not talking about likability. We're talking about honor. Honor is not always a likability situation. But the Lord God gives you the power to overcome likability and respect the title that they hold. Because notice in this verse, honor. Say, honor your mother and father. Notice, there is no conditions. There are no conditions. Meaning that you can have a faithful mother. You can have an unfaithful mother. You can have a mother that you don't know. You can have mothers, whatever. But it says, the Bible says, honor, honor her. It's not based on her performance. It's based on her title. See, we got to understand, and it's not based on your likability of her. It's based on title. Why? Because God is trying to make us understand that authority is important. And you won't, if you don't honor your mother, you will not honor God. You will not. People say, well, you know, they said some things that I don't like and whatever. Yes, that's true. As great a lady as my mother was, my man said some things that, oh, my God. It rocked my world, as the people say. I mean, I mean, and, and you didn't like always what it was said, but it's not about likability. It's about honor, and that's a lost thing in this world today, but that's a thing that will open doors for you, baby. It will open doors that are closed. You know, we talk about racism and all this stuff. Honor will open some doors. It'll open some doors of racism. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. When you learn how to honor authority, I'm not talking about um, doing the wrong thing. And I'm not talking about playing political games and all. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about true, genuine, authentic honor that comes from the heart. Because when you, your mother, you have to listen to her, but you listen to the words, but you have to listen to her heart. Her heart speaks volumes a lot of times, more so than the words that they speak. You know, I, I, you know, my mother would say some things and it would just, ooh, it would just get to you because her heart was right in those things. And she would just do some things. In fact, she was the one that taught us when we were all, you know, I grew up in a, a family of athletes. My, my sister was the academic one, my, my youngest sister. She'll tell everybody that too, because she's, she's the academic one, but we all, uh, the rest of us were athletes. And so, but my mother taught us something about authority working together as a team and taught us really how to work together, how to be, how you had to give up yourself for the best of the team. It was a family, but it taught us some lessons, some life lessons that I was, I'm even using today because mother had a way of bringing things together. See, the mother has this bond. She can glue things back together in relationships that other people don't have. 
Oh, yeah, men, we have good things. Don't get me wrong. We have our role. But mothers have the role of putting things back together that's been all broken up and all broken to pieces. In fact, they can put the children back together. We, we'll be out and torn up, and we come in, and it wasn't nothing like mom putting their hand on you and doing something for you when you were hurt or when you were sick. She nursed us back to health. And that's what a mother will do, will nurse you back to health when you need help or will say the right things at the right time when you're hurting, when you're confused, when things are not going your way. A mother. Tremendous. You know, so honor is important. So we have to honor our mothers regardless of the situations, regardless of what we feel. See, a lot of times we get caught up in the feelings. And I know we all we all get caught up in the feelings. We just, but authority is not only about feelings. Authority is about respect. Authority is about respect. You don't have to like, you know, if you, if you don't like the person, even in your, in your job, if you don't like your boss, and a lot of us don't like our bosses. Let me just tell this truth. We don't like our bosses. I mean, it ain't somebody we would hang out with. But, I mean, you just got to come on down front and tell the truth. And so we, we, won't, we won't, but we have to respect the title. If you don't like the person, you still respect the title. That's old school. I know it's old school, but it's still in school. It's still right because the Bible says it's right. Honor is right. It's always honorable to do what's right. It's never out of style to do what's right. I don't care how much technology we have, how we care whatever. It's always right to do right. And honor gives you that platform or that springboard to jump off of because submission to honor or submission to your mother shows a certain humility. It, you got to get rid of pride. And pride is the thing that causes big problems in all of us. So we have to get rid of pride. Jesus always calls us to honor. And he says, listen to your father. I love Proverbs 23, 22. Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. And boy, let me tell you something. You need to get hold of that. Do not despise your mother when she gets old. Do not despise your mother when she gets old. Why? Because that is dishonor. And just because she, oh, in fact, you should show more honor the older she gets. Because it's too late when they're going on to the other side. You know, I was telling my sister all the week, you know, it's great to go to the, the, to, the, to the cemetery, but baby, you're not talking to nobody at the cemetery but yourself. They're going on. You can't, you can't get across that chasm. You got to read your Bible. You can't get across there. So you've got to, you got to give them honor when you can. My wife has said they, these are precious moments and you, you, and you can't get them back. And so you must redeem, the Bible says you must redeem the time. You must stay on top of that. You must listen with undivided attention. I know we're busy. You know, one of the worst things we do, we can be looking at our phones. Don't do that to mama. Put the phone down. Listen to what she's saying. Get it. Listen, don't, you know, I know it's, I know we're busy and whatever. Sometimes you got to turn the phone off. You got to turn the technology off. You got to take authority over the technology. Don't let the technology take authority over you. You've got to take authority over the technology and turn it off and listen to what she has to say. Because a lot of times your prayers that you are asking God for is coming right back through her. If you would just listen to what she has to say. Celebrate her. Not only on Mother's Day, but every day. Every day should be Mother's Day. For a mom, every day. Honor her. Honor her regardless of what she's done. We don't get saved based on performance. If we got saved based on performance, there would be nobody in here saved. So we got to understand that we can't base our honor on performance. See, we base so much on, well, they don't, they're not doing this. You hear that in a marriage, they're not doing that, whatever. Grace covers it all. Grace covers it all. Grace 
when you get the revelation about grace, you'll stop basing your relationships on performance and start basing it on unconditional godly love. Because God has their answer. See, it's it, it can be confusing. Honor is confusing. I won't say it's not. It, it can be confusing because there are times when you're going to be put on the spot and the Lord is saying, honor your parents, honor your mother, honor her. And you've got to do that. You've got to think about that. But you, don't, you can't do it in your own power. The Lord gives us ways to do that. And it goes back to Ephesians. It, it talks about that. You've got to have grace power. You've got to have the light of the word power, and you've got to have wisdom. Wisdom. See, the word, see, before you get to this chapter here, in chapter five, it talks about being filled with the spirit. See, you got to be filled with the spirit and stay filled with the spirit to stay in the attitude of honor. See, you won't stay in that attitude of love if you don't stay filled with the spirit of Christ. It's more than just a feeling. It's something that will help you live right, speak to mama right, listen, and take counsel when you need it. Because it takes humility to take counsel when you need it. Oh, it does. It takes Because education is a great thing, but it can puff you up. Parents know, kids come home, we come home, you know, we come home from college. We learn a few things that we didn't know. And we come home puffed up. But my mother had a way to unpuff you, if that's such a word. Because she had that way of doing it. Even we were, we were great, like I said, we were athletes. You know, we, some of us were all American players. We come up, we were all American this and all American. My mother said, that don't, mean, that don't mean nothing in my house. You need to, you're going to wash dishes. You're going to clean up. You know, you're going to do what you need to do because you're going to honor me while you're in this house because you don't have authority. Now, if you want the authority, and I had to tell my own son this, if you want the authority of the house, let me show you the, 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 uh, the payoff on the mortgage. If you can pay that off, you can have authority. But, in, but until that day that you can't pay that mortgage off, you have no authority. You live in a, a dictatorship, you know, governed by God. Don't get me wrong. You know, you, get, get, you have no voting power. We ain't no voting in the house, in, in our house. Ain't no voting. You don't vote because it's authority. God, you know, there's no voting in the kingdom. Have you noticed? I know, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I, I'm, I'm big on voting in the democracy, but the kingdom of God is based on a theocracy, not a democracy. So there's no voting in the kingdom. If you notice, I mean, God, I mean, God don't ask us to vote. So authority, you got to understand when he, when he gives you the authority, when he gives you a command, he wants you to do that command. My mother used to keep children and I, I really know her calling was so strong in the, in that area until I came back and I was probably 30, you know, mid thirties. And I was watching her and she had a daycare center and she said to me one day, and I, I really didn't understand the revelation of this until later on, as old people say, by and by. And she said to me, she says, I don't like to keep children that I can't control them with my voice. If they can't, if, they, if I give them a command and they won't follow my command, you know, they are in danger. I can't protect them because I can't run after them. I can't always run after them, but I have to speak to them. And if I can control them with my voice, then I've got that. But I don't really like to keep a child. As, and then I thought about that thing. And I thought about that thing, even, even what I'm going through right now with my wife. You know, she's, she, you know, she's recuperating, but her responses are not there yet. She can't respond. The injury and the hurt is to the point that she can't respond. And, and I said, well, Lord, you know, but see, the Lord said, no, look at it in the spirit. I got people that's in my kingdom that's going through some things that may not have had a great mother or may not have had a great situation or may have gone through this or that, and they can't respond to my commands. And they need a healing because they can't respond to what I want them to do. Because to do the will of God, you've got to have the ability to respond. You've got to have the ability to respond because the Holy Spirit, 
will lead and guide you, but he won't make you. He's not, he, he won't make you. He's a, he, he's a perfect gentleman. He will not make you. He will lead you and guide you. But at the end of the day, you have to have the ability to respond to the spirit of Christ, to the spirit of God. And that's what this filled, being filled with the spirit does. It gives us the ability, the capability to respond to God when he says to us and nudges us and say, honor her now. Give to her now. I know you may be short, but give to her now. Do this now. Go by and see her now. I know you're busy, but you need to call her now. The Holy Spirit will prompt us to do all the things of honor if we just be sensitive to the move of God in our lives. See, grace, again, is sufficient. See, grace is God's power, constant availability. So there are times God will not rescue us out of the situation. And I'm learning that right now. We can't always be, and I would love to be rescued out of the trials and tribulations, but it's not always God's plan for that to happen. Not that he's ugly or whatever, but he's trying to get us to understand that his grace is continually supplies us with the power to endure what we have to endure. And so to go through the honor thing, sometimes you have to endure some pain. You got to endure some inconvenience. You got to endure some grievous things to bless somebody, especially your mother. You have to care for her sometime. There are times when you may have to care. You may have to care for her medically. You may have to care for her from a, from a financial standpoint. But, and it may cause some grievance. But my grace, God says, is sufficient. My grace is enough. My grace is Christ's power residing on you to help you, empower you to do what you can't do in the natural. But then the supernatural power of grace gets you to do some things that you can't do in the natural. See, we go through severe trials and tests. It's called the crucible. You're crushed. You get crushed. And that's what I've gone through the last couple of months. It's a crushing. It's a, the old folks, you know, it's a sifting. You know, you, you know what you sift wheat for? You know why you're sifting wheat? You go sifting flour? You're trying to get the impurities out. God does the same thing when he sends you through a trial or through a test. He's trying to get the impure things out of us so that we can be used mildly by him so that he can do through us and to us what he needs to do. See, the weaker the human instrument we are, the stronger God's power shines through. See, some, some of us are too strong to be used by God. See you, see, you got to be weak before the real power source turns on. See, you, you, have, to, you have to know that. See, in the natural, I'm weak, but in the spirit, I'm strong because of God. Mothers all over the world in the body of Christ knows this because there's times when they needed to have their children go to the doctor, but they had to pray over them because they was weak, but they knew God is strong. Sometimes they, you know, situations and they, people walked out on them. Fathers walked out on them. Unfortunately, that, that, that's not a good thing. When I met my wife, she was a single parent. And what drew me to her? You know what drew me to her? Now, she was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not blind. But she was committed as a mother to her child. And that, that touched something inside of me. She was committed and she honored her parents. She honored her parents. She honored her mother and her father. And not in just lip saying, but I've seen it over the years. She honored, she serves them. And that's, and in fact, when she was, the accident, she was on her way to do something for her mother. When she got into the accident, she was on her way to do something for her mother. So even in that, honor is important because you've got to do that. Honor, honor, your, honor your physical mother, but then some of us got spiritual mothers. 
See, here's the thing. Because someone said, well, my, my uh, biological mother has gone on to be with the Lord. Yes. But that doesn't take you out of the honor situation because you may have a spiritual mother. Oh, you may not have anybody. You may be old enough and nobody's a spiritual mother. But you still are required to do some things in honor. Like the, the, the older women are required to pour their lives into the younger women and help them become better mothers, better wives better disciples of Jesus Christ because of the honor that's placed upon them. See, we, we've got to get our mother's position, and we have them positioned to do the work of ministry, even no matter what age they are, because they bring value to the body of Christ. They bring value to your lives. The one thing, the one thing that you can learn is that if you've got a mentor or someone or a, somebody who's discipling you and giving you the word of God, and giving you not only the word, but application and how to apply that word. I noticed my mother, she would be keeping the children, but then after that, she was also, when the parents came, she had a word for them. She was, she was pouring, pouring her life into them. That's what a mother does. Mothers pour their life into their children, whether they're natural children or whether they're spiritual children. They pour life into them. They pour their life into them. They, they do that. They nurture them. They, they keep them because then the you know, the situation is that they are honoring God by doing that. See, this honor thing goes around. It's, it's not only you get honored, but you honor God by doing his work, by doing, staying his, doing what God says do. And sometimes we have to go through things. You know, I was, I, you know, I was, you know, the thing that we're going through now, the trials and tribulation, I was looking through the word and I was I was at the hospital and I, I see you. I was going from this place to that place and 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 thank God for pa pastors like Pastor Ferrier because he was back and forth. He was in communication with me and and the Lord, you know, I, you know, I was I was searching the scriptures and Philippians one twelve jumped out at me. It just jumped off the page at me because I said, Lord, you know, sometimes you're asking why, why, and God's saying, No, it's not why. I'm trying to teach you something in this matter. We always quick to ask why. You know, children do the same thing. Just ask why. And parents don't always want to answer your question because they're trying to teach you something in that moment. It's a teaching moment. Sometimes when you ask them why, it's out of place in the teaching moment. That's the reason why your parents sometimes get a little upset with you when you ask them why. They're trying to teach you something, and you ask them why. There's nothing wrong with asking the question, but they know that if you are in that wrong spirit, you can't really receive what they've been to say. So God had to correct me, and he says, look, I need to give you, you know, give you something here. So in 12, he said, you know, and I'm reading from this, this, this version, the CSB version, it says, now I want you to know. See, he want, God always wants us to know something. It's always, it's interesting. I want you to know. This is Paul, and Paul is in prison. He wrote the Ephesians. He's in prison in both Ephesians and in Philippians, and he's in prison, and it's interesting enough that he never prays to get out of prison. You, know, you don't see a prayer that you can say where Paul say, hey, I need deliverance out of this situation. Why? Because he knows he was in the perfect will of God. See, sometimes when you're in the will of God, it's not a bed of roses. It's, it, it is not. It is persecution, heart, heartaches, suffering, pain, all the words we don't want. But God knows. So he said, I want you to know what, what Paul is saying. Well, I want you to know, brothers and sisters. So he's talking to the body because he's calling brothers and sisters. I want you to know that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel. And I've seen that too. What has happened to us in this trial has actually advanced the gospel. We've got people that we've talked to all over the world about the gospel. We got people all over the world that we're talking to that are praying for us, and we're praying for them because we are family. We are a family of people. You know, it's, it's, and, and it comes time to the point of what, do, you know, he says in 18, what does it matter? Only that every way, whether false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed, and this I rejoice. No matter what the situation is, Christ is proclaimed. And that's what we got to do. We got, you know, we got to have our lives, not only what we say, but our, is our life proclaiming Christ? 
in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trials, in the midst of whatever is going on in your life, you can't put down your sword. You can't put down your shield. There's no vacation in the kingdom. You've got to be able to stand and then stand because that's what the word says. And so we've got to be able to stand when it's not popular. We got to be able to stand when we're going through. We got to be able to stand when the fiery darks of the enemy is going after. We got to be able to stand when the world turns their back on us. We got to be able to stand. Political correct. I'm, one thing about a trial, political correctness goes out the window. You don't, you don't care enough about that. You know, you know, you, when you're in a trial, you flip your Bible out in the ICU unit and start praying. When you're in a trial and you're desperate for God, you're not worried about what other people are thinking, what other people are saying, whatever, whatever. When your loved one is there, you, you do whatever it takes for, to hear from God. You go back and you got some horizontal relationships that's messed up. You go back and get those things fixed because you know that could hinder your prayer in a trial. So you don't you don't get caught up in all of this stuff that we get worried about and we lose sleep over. When you're in a trial, that's why trial is so purifying because it purifies and sanctifies your motives. So your motives now become more authentic to God and not, you know, make believe or not a pretense. It becomes real. And that's what we have to do, be real. And so look, the Lord wants us to, to, to be real with him. And that's what he is saying today. Like I said before, some of us have been hurt in the church or by a loved one or by someone that we had, you know, that we had a lot of hope for. You know, we may have had a child that we had all these aspirations for, and they ended up incarcerated. There's disappointments, there's pain in life. But there is a Savior. There's Jesus. Jesus came with a very special anointing to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up their wounds. No matter how deep the hurt is, Jesus can heal it. No matter how bad things are, Jesus can do it. He can fix it. First with salvation, but then with his healing power. If you notice, Jesus always taught and preached before he healed. He taught and preached before he healed. It's not a formula. It's not a formula. It's where he flowed. It's the flow of God. And God, and God, and so healing is available to us because Jesus is in the house. And when Jesus is in the house, healing is available. So no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're having to deal with, no matter what secret situations you've got, no matter what heart aches you live with, the power of God can heal you. And it's not always a physical healing. A lot of times the healing we need is the healing of our souls, the healings of our emotions, the healings of our minds, the healings of our will, the healings of everything that we, you can't see on the outside. You know, the man with palsy, they brought him up, and, and that was not his biggest need because Jesus dealt with his biggest need. Jesus said, son, your sins are forgiven you. He dealt with his big. A lot of times we think it's one thing, and it really is another. So the Lord can heal us where we are. You know, he can deal with us where we are. And today, we just want the Lord to deal with you. If you need Jesus as your Savior, if you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he's available. He's here right now. He, he wants to move in and not be a part of that. He wants to take over. He wants to, he wants to be the president, not just take residence. He wants to be the head of your life. And it's, it's a, it's a great thing to have Jesus ahead of your life. No, it's, everything is not going to be perfect. No, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that everything's going to be perfect. It is not. He has a plan for your life and he has a purpose for your life and he has 
some things he's going to want you to do, but everything is not going to be perfect. You're going to go through some trials and some tribulations. You're going to go through some things. But Jesus says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And so as we close in this time on Mother's Day, we thank God for mothers that lived a life. And we thank God for you so that you can continue on in the legacy of living a life for God. We, God is moving right now and he's touching hearts and minds and 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 some may be in the valley of decision some in the in the audience some that we can see and some we can't see we may be in the valley of decision but the holy spirit is moving right now to get you to respond to the move and the power of god because god is available right now he wants you badly. He sent his son. He sent his son. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He didn't come. He came to seek and save the lost. He sent his son. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Why? So that men, women, boys, and girls can praise the Lord to the glory of to the glory of God. So we invite you to come. If you don't know this Jesus, he's the answer. He's the one. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. No one can come to him but through him. You got to come through Jesus. That is the way. There is no other way. The world will try to tell you there are other ways, but there are no other ways. There's only one. And it's Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. He died for us. He died so that we wouldn't have to die spiritually. He died for us so that we could be part of his family, the family of God. This is an important time, church. Because this thing is winding down. We don't have forever. We only have a season. Amen. Just like the parents, you know, we talk, you only have a season. There's only a season that you have. And when your season is over, you can't get it back. It's gone. So we let the Lord move on the hearts and the minds of his people. Lord, we just thank you for what you are doing now. God, you are do doing some things in people's hearts and minds that's not always seen. But it's real. Thank you, Lord. Father, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. The Lord is looking for the ones that are, the hearts are right. The man with a palsy never said anything to Jesus, but Jesus looked into the situation looked into the man's heart and knew that the man was repentant. He's doing that now. He's looking into the hearts and minds of people to see if they are repentant and want to turn to him. It's easy to respond to him. Just respond to the Lord Jesus. We thank you for the for the healing power of God.
Let's bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just come here this morning just to say thank you. No matter what we go through, God, we still know that you're in the midst. Heavenly Father, we know that you're still working it out. God, we realize this morning that there's nothing too hard for you, oh God. As we lean and depend on you this morning, God, we just thanking you for this being God all by yourself. Oh, God, somebody said, I'm crying in the middle of the night, but early in the morning, you turn things around. We just say thank you right now. Oh, God, somebody said, I'm having times, I'm struggling left and right, but you come down and you make things all right, oh, God. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you right now, oh God. Oh God, somebody got up this morning and didn't know which way to go, oh God. But you turned the situation around and you let them come into the house of the God one more time, oh God. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Heavenly Father, you've been so good to us, oh God. We thank you, God, for continuing to make ways out of no way, oh God. We thank you right now, God, because you, oh God, and only you, oh God, can heal right now, oh God. Oh God, we actually just to watch over this pastor, the preacher that preached today, oh God. Watch over his wife, oh God. Move in the hospital. Touch her right now, oh God. Send healing her way, oh God. We say thank you right now, oh God. We don't see it today, oh God. But there is a tomorrow, oh God. We, we realize, oh God, that you can strengthen her, oh God. And you can move right now, oh God. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Heavenly Father, we ask you to watch over true faith, oh God. Continue to have us to be what you have us to be in the last and evil days, oh God. Stir up us, oh Lord. Have use us, oh God, to tell somebody that's lost, oh God. Tell somebody that can't see the way, oh God. We ask you right now, oh God, just to touch. We say thank you. God, we ask you to watch over our pastor, oh God. Even through the tough times, even through the rough times, we realize that his faith is still strong, oh God. We realize that he's still leaning and depending on you, oh God. He's still telling the story, oh God, because he realizes, oh God, that you live, oh God. And we say thank you. God, watch over his wife, oh God. Watch over the grandkids. Watch over his son, oh God. Shield, oh God, because we know that the enemy is busy, oh God. But shield him, oh God, because we realize, oh God, that you have all power, oh God. And God, we ask you, oh God, just to save, oh God. The unsaved, oh God. Reach, let's take the unreachable, oh God. Move right now, oh God. And on this day, oh God, 
We thank you for the mothers, oh God. The mothers that sit up at night, oh God. We thank you, oh night. They cried in the middle of the night, oh God. Praying for the child, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God. Realizing their prayers, oh God. Helped us along the way, oh God. And we thank you for them right now, oh God. Continue to just to be with them, oh God. On this day and every day, oh God. And God, we say thank you. We say thank you, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you right now, oh God. You working it out right now, oh God. You bringing us in right now, oh God. We say thank you. And God, we thank you for your many blessings, oh God. Food, shelter, and clothing, oh God. Oh God, things that we take for granted, oh God. This morning, we just want to say thank you right now, oh God. We say thank you. Continue to be with us, oh God. Shield us. Protect us. Keep us, oh God. And God, even the ones that surround us, oh God. Touch, oh God. Send healing, oh God. Send peace. Send joy. Oh, Heavenly Father, we say thank you. And thank you for the names that was called out on this morning, oh God. Heavenly Father, you know all about them, oh God. You know who they are, oh God. Move up and down the roads, oh God. Open the doors, oh God. Go in the houses, oh God. Touch them right now, oh God. We say thank you. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.